what, or rather who, is a showman. A group of people who have been delivering fun and entertainment to the public for hundreds of years, therefore becoming integrated within British culture. Carter Steam Fair is an example of a current travelling fairground. It uses vintage machinery and equipment as a homage to fairs from the past. Started in 1975 by John and Anna Carter, the family has continued to bring their shows to towns and cities all over Britain in a quest to keep tradition alive. Carters came about because um, I was married to a man who liked to collect things and he collected horn gramophones, 78 jazz records, you name it, he collected it, old cars. And he finally got around to fairground rides and then we just became obsessed. So this really is a happy accident that I've ended up doing it because we bought the gallopers and I just found myself with a paintbrush in my hand and I've not really put one down. But since uh, my husband died 12 years ago, um, I got together with the boys and said, what do you want to do, basically? Because, I mean, we're all dependent on one another. We can't really function without a team. And they wanted to go on with it. it it's a kind of double-edged sword, working and living with your family. I mean, I'm quite happy with it because I see the grandchildren a lot and I see my kids a lot. But it's probably not very nice for them to live with their mother-in-law. It's quite hard with family because if you're sort of the boss, you have to go around nagging, which does affect your relationships with people. Uh, I don't really find that easy. You need a certain character to be able to work with your, your family and it be a, a business. And I'd say 90% of the time we get along very well, but we every family has its moments. Not a lot of people know what showmen are, but a showman in their true, I mean, <laughs> really, a showman Richard Branson is a showman because um, he's got showmanship but he's not a showman in the same context I'm a showman uh, which is a fairground operator and the word showman comes from showmanship it comes from being able to attract customers I learnt to sign write um, from our, the sign writer we used for years to decorate or do all lettering for us and then along with that I learned from my mum and dad through their techniques and um, there's a lot of bad sign writing out there and it's a, it's a dying art form sign writing because it's not really not, not much call for it because it can all be done um, printed and stuck on with vinyl which is a shame because it's a lovely art form. Carters are on the road between spring and winter during off season the fair continues working hard in their workshops in the yard here they work on fixing and repainting their equipment, along with revamping things for other fairs. Basically we've always got a steady stream of people and we've got a lot of regulars who've been with us for years and we employ a lot of students, some volunteers. This isn't sexist, but it's, it's young guys because it's very, very heavy work. Um, they've got to be pretty stoical to put up with the weather conditions and the hours. Um, some people come along with dreams, you know, that it's a sort of romantic dream of running away and joining the fair and they last about half an hour. Um, yeah, they've got to be strong, they've got to be keen, spirit of adventure. And some people you don't think will last a minute, stay with us for years. Don't know why really, because it's tough. Well, this will be my second season with the Carters. So, so I've always had passion for the steam engines and there's not many places now where you can run a steam engine but I'll most likely still be here 10 years time it's just a dream job so I get to run a steam engine every day there's no other jobs, no time for another job Though showmen are completely different to other travelling communities they are still victim to the same abuse and stereotyping that gypsy travellers receive 1995, as I remember, we, we were booked into a site in um, Uxbridge, we'd never been there before, in fact no fair had been there before. The council let us to ground and got wind of it and one of them decided to write a spoof letter as though it was from us to all the residents on the green and the letter read along the lines of lock up your daughters um, and watch out for the lead on your roofs um, and expect us to fill the 
filled a pond up with our waste, <laughs> which was just unbelievable. And it made the front page of the newspaper two weeks in a row, and there was eight outrage, the council were letting us there. And they'd never seen us, they didn't know anything about us. And then we turned up, and they loved us. Um, I've been called a gypsy bitch, which I think is quite nice, um, which rather surprised me. And people assume if you live in a caravan, you're, I don't know, you're not quite up to scratch. I think the thing that really brought it home to me, I had some very upmarket people turn up one day and they wanted to see in my living van and I opened the door to show them and they went, oh, books, as though they were absolutely amazed that we could read and write. So you are really stereotyped. It, it's very frustrating when I'd say 75% of people out there don't know the difference between a showman and a gypsy. You get lumped in the same, the same as they do. Um, and of course they're not very popular. They were good gypsies, bad gypsies, they were good showmen, they were bad showmen. It's, it's something that gets very tedious when people expect you to be dishonest and a surprise. In fact, whenever I've been given too much money, which is quite often people pay you a pound too much because they think it's 250 when it's two pound on a ride. When you give them the pound back, maybe one in a hundred will say thank you. Getting a venue is the most difficult part of taking the show on the road and each fair is desperate to secure their sites before the others get a chance. Mostly our competitors are modern fun fairs. Um, we don't really have many competitors with anything like our product. It's mostly, we have a bad relationship with quite a few other showmen who jump in in front of us and take the sights and, you know, that does spoil it a bit for us, I have to be honest. Because if there's already been a modern fun fair there, they've been to the fair, they've got no money. And it's just pretty cutthroat business, really. Um, we're very different from the modern fairs. For, uh, the whole appeal is different. We, are, we appeal to families, all ages. And obviously we have a very non-aggressive image. Showmen must maintain a close relationship with the council of each town they wish to visit, or else things are made a lot tougher. Though we were told that Reading Borough Council were very helpful towards Carters, when we contacted them they were reluctant to do an interview with us. One department of the council, like the events and the parks, will hire you the land and then another department takes the boards down and takes you to court and finds you. We live in quite a sort of draconian society nowadays. You have to behave yourself and do exactly as you're told. Last year, 2012, was awesomely bad. We were knee deep in mud nearly all year. And so not only are you struggling to get onto the grounds without damaging them, but you're paying fines to the council for damaging the grounds. Well, I feel quite nervous this year because it was so awesomely bad last year. I do feel a bit nervous this year and I've never felt that way before. Yeah, we're all sort of dreading it. <laughs> We were told the Carters would have to cancel their opening weekend at Prospect Park. Anticipating the issues this would cause the fair, we headed down to see what was going on. All right, yeah, OK, bye now. Oh, it's my phone call to the council, cancelling this weekend. I now have to get busy and cancel all the skips and loos and providers and tenants and staff, which... Um, it's not easy, you're all set up, you spent loads of money on advertising, but basically the ground is waterlogged. It's like a lake. And our chances of getting on there are remote. It's, there's a point where you, 
You know, no matter how optimistic you are, you have to face reality and admit defeat. Well, it's been a really tough winter. We're all worried about money because the economy is so disastrously bad um, that we've had a tough winter anyway because it rained virtually every day last summer for seven months. I think we had about three weekends when it didn't rain and we lost loads of money and we we lost loads of deposits, damage deposits. We had to pay to have grounds reinstated. So we're just going straight back into it. Yeah, so it's a bit of a worrying time. Believe you me, when it's like this, the work is 10 times harder and it's hard enough as it is. We're all, all ready to pull out and then we just get told we're not. So it's a bit it's a bit of a letdown really, but it's in the best interest not for us not to, so we'll stay here for a bit longer. You just have to maintain this positive positive attitude and you carry them along with you. We have to get out for Easter. Easter's an important date for travelling fares. Despite continuing weather concerns, the decision was made to leave the yard and head to Palmer Park in Reading for Easter weekend. Life is calm, so don't go outside without your hat, cause you might not be coming back. Live a little closer to the left side of the road Listen to aquatic wisdom go against the flow Regarding possibilities I'm trying to balance everything on my knees It's part of an attempt to aesthetically please Before the fair could be open to the public, the workers needed to spend the week setting up and safety checking all the rides and equipment. Unfortunately, every so often you'll get some mindless graffiti which you instantly get rid of and because if there's one bit of graffiti it invites another bit. There's places we've gone to that we've gone once and not gone back again because, <laughs> yeah, for want of a better description, it's been a SHIT hole. Um, and yeah, you just, you just don't want to don't be there. We've got family, we've got children, so we don't want to go to places where we don't feel safe. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Voltini Sideshows, where for your edification we present a veritable cornucopia of curious phenomenon and indefatigable feats. Voltini Sideshows is a truly authentic Victorian sideshow. Utilising a unique electrocution show, the Voltinis have gained a high profile. This year they find themselves touring with Carter Steam Fair. I'm Professor Voltini, and this is the show I run with my wife. My name is Kirsty Bitterini, and I was brought up in traditional circus. The sideshow we've been performing now for five years, and this is our third year with Carters. We approached them through a mutual circus friend, because he, he knew them and knew what it was all about, and he just said you would work so well there and would fit in so well there that you really should go and join Carters. 
teaching to keep all these rides on them, you know, they're so old, they need a lot of work, the artwork takes ages, you know, they are a dedicated bunch to keep doing this, and I don't understand how they afford to do it, especially when last year, you know, they're not making as much as they have been, they're still paying for everything. I shall attempt to swallow all the way down my esophagus to the pit of my stomach. A 28 inch sabre! I think live entertainment will stop it's dying out in England. Um, Britain's Got Talent is contributing to that. I don't like that show at all. I don't think it does live performers that do it for a living any favours at all. The amateurs that work in Pizza Hut or something that go on that show, they get a lot out of it. The people that have been doing it for years seem to get a lot of abuse. They phone us every year, Britain's Got Talent, asking us to do that programme and every year we tell them no. Because we're professional, we do it for a living, we don't do it for their praise. <laughs> But um, I do feel that live entertainment is dying, it's very sad and if people don't start coming to things like this, you know, we won't be here forever, so that I don't know. Fingers crossed that we interest enough people. We never have any complaints about the show, people always leave happy, they do enjoy it. It is unique, you know, there's nothing else like this anywhere else, it's just, they've got to keep coming to see it. The electric side of it is completely unique. I mean, there are a few still doing electric acts, but they don't have the technology that we do because Sebastian builds all our machines, so they're completely unique. You can't get them anywhere else, and they are dangerous. So you really have to have an understanding of what you're doing with this. I do enjoy the job. I just, I guess, I enjoy making people happy. I suppose. It's, um, life's pretty bad at the moment, and everybody's skinned. Unfortunately, not many come to the show that that skin could do with some more people, which would be nice. Education and science! I think what we've done uh, in, 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 a, in a bit of a niche market, and we've shown people that you can take fairground rides that have been basically disregarded and put in the back of the yard, restore them to their original standard and um, and take take money with them, take a living with them. So for those with a keen eye, really know that we're the real deal and the so-called competition, to my mind, has still got a long way to go there. But it's always a way when you've got no money, when, you've, when you're, you're desperate, your generator dies and you have to get it together. But had I not, I could have lost the whole weekend because my generator runs all my stuff. Um, so that would have given me horrors. Show must go on. As the weekend draws to a close, it's just the start for Carter Steam Fair. Despite having to postpone the opening, they are now full steam ahead until winter, providing another weather catastrophe doesn't stop them. They've got to keep coming to see it, otherwise it won't be there for the next generation, and that's terrible. We are a bit of an endangered species. I'd like to think it would go on, but who knows.